Now you've done your literature search, you've spoken to new mothers and care providers, and you know what the goals of your intervention should be in order to make the largest impact to address postpartum depression. But how to convert these goals into actual intervention content? In this lecture, we will take you through the next two steps of the intervention planning process. We'll discuss how to select theory and evidence-based intervention methods and strategies to deliver those methods. Also, we'll talk briefly about merging this into a full intervention program and testing that among your target population. In both steps, we will highlight some of the key aspects you need to be aware of. In order to reach our specific goals, the next step in intervention planning is to decide what the best methods and strategies are to change behavior in your target population. A method is a technique used to directly influence determinants of behavior or environmental conditions. In psychology, we also call these methods behavior change techniques. These are our working ingredients, so to say. For instance, if we want to increase knowledge about different strategies to address the topic of depression, we could provide information, use a discussion to encourage critical reflection on suitable strategies, and let them set their own set of cues for a specific communication strategy. And if we want to increase self-efficacy to start a conversation about depression, we could use guided practice to let them rehearse and repeat certain communication techniques, provide feedback to stress what goes well, and set graded tasks to rehearse in practice by increasing the difficulty of a situation. A strategy is a practical way of organizing and delivering an intervention method. For instance, if we want to provide information and start a discussion with our care providers, group meetings could be an effective strategy. If we want to increase self-efficacy using guided practice, role play would be a good strategy. And to monitor the graded tasks, keeping diaries would support the execution of the tasks and insight into someone's progress. Just as for individual determinants, there are also many methods and strategies that could be used to change determinants on a social or environmental level. For example, to enhance interdisciplinary consultation and referral regarding postpartum depression, we could work on the network linkages between all healthcare providers involved in maternity care, such as midwives, pediatricians and GPs. And to further involve the community around a new mother, Social action methods can be used to increase awareness and signaling among community centers and churches, for example. By listing intervention methods that match your program goals, including practical and appropriate strategies of delivering those methods to your target group, you're halfway through step three. By now, you probably understand that there is a wide array of techniques and strategies available, but evidence on their effect differs. Also, certain methods and techniques work better under certain conditions. A good example of this is fear appeal. For instance, in an intervention on quitting smoking, it is very tempting to threaten with all the risks of smoking and showing what it does to your body, since the evidence for this is so clear. However, just focusing on frightening people in the hope that they will change their behavior will not work. Fear appeal is only effective if the target group also has the skills and self-efficacy to actually change their behavior. So instead of only providing information on the risks of smoking, one should also provide smokers support on how to stop smoking. Concordantly, this also accounts for the strategies you choose. If you want to increase skills to quit smoking by the method of modeling, you could organize a meeting in which people who manage to quit tell their story and share their tips and tricks. This might work very well in a community of middle-aged women who love to share experiences in such a way. For adolescents, however, it might work much better to see their idols in a soap series saying no to a cigarette. Therefore, it is key to do an extensive literature review in order to find out what the most suitable methods and strategies are to address your chosen determinants and to reach your target population. Moreover, it is relevant to find out what combinations of techniques work best to increase the behavior change effects even further. When you've chosen your methods and strategies, it is time to create your actual intervention. In other words, you're going to make an action plan for your intervention. That means it's time to be creative, but also keep in mind what is feasible. How should your intervention look like regarding time investment, 
Will it be a one-time awareness day or an eight-week program? What is the best mode of delivery? Should it be face-to-face, -face, online, via telephone? Who will carry the intervention out? What materials are needed? When, where and how will it be implemented? And for what period of time? Who should be informed about it? And of course, what are your resources? How much money and staff is available? A lot of questions, which can all be key to create success. In this process, it is essential to involve your stakeholders again, because they need to commit in order to create an effect, and they can help you in deciding what is feasible. Finally, it is essential to pilot test your intervention on a small scale. Therefore, you need to determine who best to test it on, and how you want to do an assessment of the fit, quality, and the expected results. Really use your test participants to receive feedback from, to adapt and improve your intervention. In this lecture, we've marked the third and fourth step of an intervention planning process, coming to an actual intervention. You now know that in order to create an effective intervention that fits your target group, a thorough assessment of available methods and strategies is needed. And that in developing all, deciding on the practicalities and piloting an intervention, the involvement of the relevant stakeholders is insurmountable. In the next lecture, we will look at the last steps of the intervention planning process addressing implementation and evaluation.